hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with a brand new review for married to medicine season 10 episode 10 if you are new here then welcome i give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail if you're back for a second or third time then welcome back y'all please don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe to the channel share with a friend hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time i upload a video now child let's get into it if we gonna get into it now this episode i thought was a very married to medicine like episode and what i mean by that is this episode was very reminiscent of episodes before the theatrics now i did think the only thing that would have made this episode better was a little bit of humor we needed we needed some type of comedic relief but otherwise i thought it was a pretty solid episode i know a lot of people may not have enjoyed it but this gives me nostalgic married to medicine we were just missing quad honey i know the people don't like to hear that honey but we were missing quad so child let's get into it if we gonna get into it when the episode first opens up, we see the montage that they do of the ladies. Same thing, different episode. When the other scene opens up, Toya and Simone meet for drinks. Simone has just gotten off of work. I think she got confused. Child, she started trying to talk about the hospital and things she had to do. I think she thought she was talking to Jacqueline, honey, but Simone was like, so I had to do this and I had to do that. Toya said, I don't understand none of that. I'm good. <laughs> I don't get it. So then Simone started talking to her and asking her if she was a germaphobe. Toya said it's just the way she grew up. Then she brings up how she speaks to Eugene. So she said, you know what? I gotta change the way that I speak to him, but why do I have to keep changing? Uh, because we're ever growing and evolving, just like Simone said. And so she was like, well, I just feel like I have to keep changing for him. It's about respecting your husband. So she goes, well, it's no passion with us. It's just no passion in our relationship. Simone said well maybe you should plan some dates that's what I was thinking why can't you plan it shouldn't all be on him you can do something too Simone said well girl I'm gonna tell you this but don't say I said nothing he told Cecil that he's afraid to plan for you because you are so critical he took you to South Carolina for your birthday she's like yeah he took me there and then we get on this horse and carriage ride and they start giving us this history lesson he know I don't like no history I barely passed history class Ma'am, you are pissed because they were talking about history during your horse and carriage ride? Just keep on, Toya. Keep on. You gonna complain your damn way out of a marriage. I would be afraid to plan for you too, especially with you nitpicking every single thing that he does. You pick everything that man does apart. Nobody wanna hear all that. So Toya talking about, I feel like we need to reestablish the fun. Girl, you should have married one of those Atlanta rappers. Because they ain't going to stay reestablishing the fun because they ain't doing nothing damn else. They're going to stay playing. Dr. Eugene is an MD. He ain't got time to be reestablishing nothing but patience. Moving forward. In the next scene, Heavenly is at the office and T.S. Madison is in the chair. You know, Married to Medicine is good for giving us a good celebrity cameo, honey. They ain't going to have no regular schmegular people in the office. It's going to be a celebrity. So T.S. Madison is in the chair. Heavenly said, you know, she went on T.S.'s show and they instantly hit it off. So Heavenly is talking to T.S. Madison. T.S. said, you know, black people don't want to respect who and what she is. And there were never any trans people on TV. But guess what? She turned out to be one. So it's not about that. Heavenly says, you know, that all of them just want to be accepted. And T.S. Madison identifies as a woman and she wants to be accepted as one. Now, I did like the little mini educational moment that T.S. gave us because, I mean, it's needed. And I like seeing Dr. Heavenly in the office because we oftentimes only see Simone and Jackie in their practices. So I liked seeing Heavenly outside of her mess and in her bag. Over on the other side of Atlanta, Dr. Jackie is in the office with a lady that's one of her patients and she's a cancer survivor. And so she's talking to her about her cholesterol. It's a little bit high. And she's explaining at her weight, she has an increased risk for diabetes, heart disease, and it could also aid in speeding up you getting cancer. Because you know, they say that that's connected to the foods that we eat and all of that. So she's telling her that she's a candidate for semi-glutide because it makes you feel full. So the lady is kind of making jokes like, yeah, I need that because I eat too much. And Dr. Jackie is just standing there looking at her all stern in the face. Now, y'all know she has a history of calling people large. 
listen, Jacqueline, everybody doesn't want to be stick thin. And just because these numbers that were created to make us feel less than, just because they created those numbers, don't mean you have to throw them in our faces. I swear they want everybody to be 90 pounds soaking wet. That's not for everybody. Now, don't get me wrong. You do need to take care of your health because if you get larger, you can have an increased risk of certain diseases. Don't get me wrong. But it's just the way in which she says it. It's just something about it I don't like. Over in Simone's office, her patient is saying that she's also taking semi-glutide. Honey, is this episode sponsored by semi-glutide? Because what is going on? But she wants to know if she should stop taking it right before she's trying to conceive. So Simone is telling her, yes, you can absolutely not take Ozempic, that or any other weight loss drug when you are pregnant or while you're trying to conceive. So Simone then says Ozempic is a diabetic drug and people are taking it. Okay. And so people with diabetes aren't able to get the medicine that they need. But then she turns right around and says, see, this is the thing I want y'all to understand. Y'all always looking at heavenly when she say little slick stuff. Dr. Simone be saying little slick stuff too. And she ain't fooling me. She just plays it off. But she got a real slick mouth with all that grinning and laughing she be doing. But anyway, she gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. If I get fat, then I'm gonna take it. Okay, so you're telling me that you would aid in taking necessary meds from my diabetic father? Got it. <laughs> got it. You want to make sure that you can be aesthetically pleasing. So you're going to take the diabetic medication that every other diabetic in the world needs. Got it. Duly noted. Back in Dr. Jackie's office, she's talking about semi-glutide and its side effects. And she's saying as long as the good outweigh the bad, then she's going to use it. There's a machine in her office based on your weight. It tells you your age. So she gets on and she's like, you see what it said about me? I'm 24. What does that mean? And what else is going on? So then her patient got on it and Dr. Jackie tells her she weighs 241 pounds. She's like, your BMI is 44.3. So you're morbidly obese. Child, I wish I would get on national TV and let Jacqueline call me morbidly obese when that lady looks proportionate for her height. That's the thing that y'all have to understand. Her height and her weight are proportionate. This machine that spit out a number and now you're going to get on national TV and call this woman morbidly obese. Back over here with Simone, she's telling her patient Rashida that she needs to have a talk with her husband pre-pregnancy because of the Georgia laws. Because at five and a half, six weeks, there's a heartbeat for the baby. So she won't be able to take care of things if she needs to in Georgia. Ooh, wee. Some women don't even find out they're pregnant until six weeks. That's when I found out. I did not know I was pregnant, child. I went and had margaritas with my friends. I had some some good old Mexican food and everything. Next thing I know, I found out I was pregnant. I said, baby, now that I'm not already drank this margarita. Oh, honey, my nerves were bad. So, I mean, at six weeks, they have a heartbeat, but you're just now finding out. She said in Georgia, they have the heartbeat bill. Once the baby has a heartbeat, then you can no longer get things taken care of. You have to go to another state. She said it's really hard because the person would have to leave Georgia in order to get that handled. Now, Simone did say that she was pro-choice. It's really up to you what you want to do with your body. And that's a heavy topic. So I really don't even want to say the word. It's too heavy for YouTube. YouTube has a certain stipulation when it comes to their advertisers. So I can't really speak on it too much. I can't go too deep into it. But this episode is really hitting on some pretty important subjects. And I pray that this woman is able to have a beautiful and healthy pregnancy and she does not have to go through those things. Moving forward. In the next scene, Eugene and Toya are taking the boys to the dentist and they sit down. Toya brings up girls not liking the smart guys, only the athletes, because one of her sons told her that. So Eugene said, well, I ain't play football or basketball. And her son said, you ran track and you got lucky. You know what, son? You're a smart one. You take after your daddy. Because that is exactly why he got Toya. And that's exactly why he let Toya run him over. Because he feels like he looked up and he cannot strike gold twice. So he is letting Toya run amok in the palace. Shout out to Mama D. That's exactly why he let her do the things that she does. Because he feels like, man, I looked up by getting her. I was the nerd in school. And I'm pretty sure that girls wouldn't look my way. I got Toya. And I'm not about to rock the boat. So Toya gets in a confessional with Eugene and she says she wasn't really into nerds back then. I'm not gonna lie, most school-aged girls 
overlook the good smart guys they just do okay even when i was in high school they overlook them but baby they gonna learn they are going to learn as they get older that you gonna wish you had you a eugene instead of a tyrone moving forward she did say eugene would have been a good study partner child toya know how to put that man down don't she eugene then tells the boys look i'm dating your mom she's my girlfriend now and um i've taken her on dates but she ain't took me on one and she ain't because she feels like it should be all on you she's downplaying it talking about well i mean he took me to the butcher girl stop saying it like that you acting like he took you to the meat market that man took you to a restaurant that was closed down with a personal chef and a bartender that looked like she need to comb her damn hair <laughs> Child, I re looked at that episode. I said, baby, that bartender looked like she just was road wet and hung up dry. Do you hear me? Mm mm mm, honey. She needed to get up and get herself together. Baby, you need to be ready for the camera. You need to be camera ready. Mm mm mm. So Eugene quickly corrected it. He said, no, I took her to a restaurant. Toya, it is okay to treat him. It is okay. So the boys go in for their checkup. Toya is saying in the confessional that she thinks a lot about what will happen when they leave home because that's what was happening between her and Eugene. She was thinking, do we have anything in common? Are we growing apart? Like what's really going on? And I could tell by the way that Eugene was looking at her, he was not too happy with what she was saying. And yeah, once they leave, you're going to have to sit with each other. And Eugene may realize that he don't even like you. That's what happened to my uncle child. I ain't the one to gossip. So y'all ain't heard it from me in case they come around here. <laughs> Maybe they come around to this YouTube. Y'all ain't heard that from me. He had his own Toya and she just kept on, kept on, kept on. And my uncle is paid. Do you hear me? I'm talking about real money, real long. And she just kept on. When all of us got to a particular age and me and my cousins are like all the same age. Once we got old enough, and that last child turned 18 deuces baby he was out the door and she was sitting there looking crazy still trying to get him back to this day okay to this day toya don't be my aunt i'm just saying in the next scene dr g and sweet tea are going to visit the specialist together so sweet tea is telling the specialist that you know she's really been having bad back pain so she said okay well we're gonna have to get to the to the bottom of what it is they go over the mri that she had for the fibroids and she has one that's five centimeters and it's moving toward where her uterus lining is so before it does that and enters the lining of the uterus she wants to go ahead and remove it because it should be simple and she feels like surgery would be best so she said okay you know with endometriosis surgery will increase your chances of getting pregnant naturally but you are going to have to wait six months in order for you to heal before you start trying for a baby. She up there talking about, no, I don't want to wait. In the confessional with G, she going to say, I don't want to keep you from the, from the cookie. I don't want to keep you from the Hello Kitty for six months. I don't want to do that. Sweet tea, girl, you are starting to get on my nerves. Nah. I've been trying to hang in there with you, but you worried about the wrong damn things. You have to do what is necessary if you want the child. I don't know if you're mature enough to even be trying to get pregnant. Girl, what are you talking about? If you're worried about him getting sex instead of worried about taking care of your body, girl gone. I don't even have time. I'm not going to let you wor worry me, honey. I'm not going to let you work me up. You need to be worried about you. Even Dr. G was like, don't worry about me. I'm going to be fine. And, and basically in the back of his mind, he was thinking, girl, don't play. You said she was going to give me a baby and a baby is what I want. Child, this whole thing is a mess. Moving forward. In the next scene, Cecil and Simone are on their way to the boys' condo. And the boys are making them dinner and they bring over some necessities. Baby, it's a celebration. Because they are finally empty nesters. The boys are on the other side of town. Cheers to the girls' weekend. <laughs> Baby, shout out to Nene. You better watch those B words before you end up over there in the ocean. Ooh, child. Mm -mm -mm. So they cheers and whatnot in the confessional because the boys are finally in their own place. Simone worried about it. The place is clean tonight. Ma'am, they don't live with you anymore. Let them men be the men. If they don't want to clean up, let them sit in filth. Eventually, they'll clean it up. If you taught them the right way, they will clean it up. You should not come over here and try to clean their house and do your thing at home. If you want to be an empty nester, stay empty. She over there searching 
with a black light all up in the room trying to see what's going on but only for michael now this kind of threw me off i thought this was rude okay i'm sure that miles feels different because of the way that they treat him and the way that they act because she had the black light she went into michael's room so then cecil says oh do you need to do the black light for miles too she said no i only need to do the black light for michael now at first i was thinking well that's rude as hell then i thought about it and maybe she's saying because miles is more responsible she doesn't have to do that for him because he's cleaner than michael so i'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and say it went that way because otherwise it makes me feel like you know michael is the ladies man don't nobody want miles that's how i originally took it but after i thought about it because you know it's all in your perception i was like all right i'm gonna go and give her a pass so they cooked a little jambalaya for Cecil and Simone. They ate. Simone said she was going to get high blood pressure because it was salty as hell. But Cecil was good, honey. Cecil was eating it up. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> He's so proud of them boys, honey. Ooh, he proud of them babies. In the next scene, the ladies are doing a PSA for the mortality rate among black women. Jacqueline has put this thing together because, of course, she sat with the vice president. Heavenly and Simone arrive first. Heavenly is up first to do her portion of the PSA. Now, Heavenly do all that talking. And she had to do 756,000 takes. I said, Heavenly now. Even Simone said, you know what? Now, she did make me laugh with this. She said, this is much different than sitting in your closet talking ish on that YouTube. <laughs> it's definitely much different, honey. When you got a script and you got to read that teleprompter, honey, ain't no time for hemming and hawing. Act like you got some sense. Act like you can read and write. Sweet T and Toya walked in looking like sisters. I said, baby, not y'all looking like twins today. They walked in next, and then Dr. Alicia and Phaedra, they came. Toya and Simone fighting over who's next. Now, Jackie told Toya that she was next, and Simone is like, uh, no. Okay, I was here on time. So, therefore, and thus and such, I am next. Meanwhile, the producer is over there looking annoyed, and Jackie is looking like she don't know what's going on. Ma'am, you told Toya that she was next, so fix it. But did y'all catch when he asked who's next, and Simone said me? the doctor i said baby they really do look down on them wives honey you know toya said it a few seasons back and i was like toya girl they don't look down on y'all and do <laughs> and do over on the other side of town all the men including mr dr himself curtis they meet up at the cigar lounge hey curtis nice to see you okay nice of you to join us the guys are having drinks Greg is trying to prove something, honey, asking, well, is this a man's drink? Because I want a man's drink. Eugene looked at him. He said, it's a man's drink if a man's drinking it. I know that's right, baby. I know that's right. So they started talking about Dr. G being married again. He was like, yeah, this is the final time I'm getting married. They're talking about that and him having a baby. He couldn't wait to get back on here. I can't stand him. It's just something about him that just gets on my nerves between that voice and him just being who he is. He just gets on my nervous system. Back over with the ladies at the PSA, Sweet T is talking about all of her medical issues. Now she got sacardosis. I said, girl, what? I'm not going to tell you again, Letitia, to stop speaking all this stuff and accepting all that nonsense. Even if they told you something, you can still rebuke it, honey. I don't want to keep hearing that. Girl. I'm going to have to DM you because you're getting on my nerves. You need some guidance. Back over with the men. They're talking and Kima, who is Alicia's husband, brings up Dr. Alicia leaving dentistry. So he's telling them that, you know, he's from Nigeria. And if the woman doesn't listen, then the man is considered weak. But then he went left talking about, you know, I'm in America, but I just refuse to cut off my nutsack for a woman. So Dr. Damon said, hold him up. So it sounds like you're saying we don't have nuts. Uh, that's exactly what he's saying. Now, we know you run things with Buddy, Dr. Damon Daddy, so don't worry. We know <laughs> we know who wear the pants over there with Buddy. Honey, we seen it last season. And this man is trying to overcompensate for something because his misogynistic BS ain't going to fly with these women. Okay, I don't see how Alicia can do it, baby. Couldn't be me. And she just sits there and smiles. Paula, tink, tink. He hurry up and backtrack, though, when a man confronting him about it. Because, see, that's the thing. Men like him don't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other men, only women. It's real easy for him to get slick with a woman. But when it comes to a man, no, no, that's not what I meant at all, boss. That's not what I meant. Mm-hmm. He said that he doesn't make the rules, he just follows them. 
So then Dr. Damon said, listen, I'm half American and half Caribbean. And sometimes I hear my brothers making generalized statements about American men. Kima talking about, you know, women have been running things for too long. They need to, we need to take back our control. We lost control. So then Eugene came in clutch. He came in clutch for the ladies, letting him know women are still underpaid, still are not respected. The women are not doing as well as men are. It's still disproportionate. It's Especially when it comes to our pay grades if we were to actually that's why they don't like you to talk about your salary around that water cooler because if you did you would be pissed okay you really would so he let that be known and see this is why I want to chew Toya up every time she comes down on Eugene because even in her absence he's a real one because he could have easily sat there and you know how men do when they get together some men not all okay I don't want to say every man but when they get together they start group thinking Oh, yeah, man, you sure right. But they wouldn't say that in front of their wives. Eugene and Dr. Damon are of the opposite thinking. Then this uninformed man talking about men don't have a voice. Well, you need to check some of these laws put in place by men. Y'all most definitely still have a voice. Alicia, how did you let him hit you over the head with a club and carry you back to his cave? It's giving he Tarzan you Jane. Like what, what is happening? Dr. Damon said, you know, I respect him and I respect and, you know, and I understand some of the things that he says, but we can all learn from each other. And I agree with that. Certain things that he knows that maybe you can learn from and vice versa. At the end of the episode, we get the ladies final cut of the PSA. And I have to say this, I have my feelings, but the cause is more important than what I think of Jacqueline at this moment. And I love that this was broadcasted so that women can see and other people can see how dire things can be for black women during childbirth. This was a much needed conversation, a much needed PSA. It came together beautifully. I think everybody did an awesome job. And that was the end of the episode. It wasn't much of an episode. It was kind of a filler, but I did like the fact that we got the guys by themselves. We got to see a little bit about what's going on with Sweet Tea. And like I said, it's very reminiscent of the older Married to Medicine episodes. And another thing that I loved is that we saw all of these black doctors. We saw the black orthodontist. We saw the black specialist. I mean, it was just so great. Baby, the doctors were working overtime this episode. Do you hear me? Now paging all the doctors in Atlanta. They was paging them. <laughs> Baby, they was paging them. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.